Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's August 10th. It's 2010. Now, I want to let all of you know this. Right now, in Seoul, South Korea, right now, it's my brother's birthday! Oh my god, so Celebration Nation is happening in South Korea. It's a large day of prayer there in Seoul because of my brother's renowned shout-casting abilities. For any of you who did not know who the infamous Storm Observer is... Um, Nick is like the, the, like the StarCraft shoutcaster. Like, people like me and everyone else were just plebeians, but Nick's the guy who's actually, like, shoutcasting all the huge Korean matches with Gom TV and all that good jank, so. Happy birthday to you, I will drink my coffee to you, or I'll just drink my coffee, because I do that anyways. And what's cool about this is that, um, t tomorrow... I'll be doing a daily. I'll be doing another low-level daily uh, as well then tomorrow. And um, it'll be August 11th here. So I'll be celebrating Nick's birthday here. So, of course, big big day of prayer among casters. It's very important to be reverent and deferential to, to he who is Nick. So, anyways, um, welcome to the Day 9 Daily. It's Day 9 Daily number 163, where the point of these Day 9 Dailies is to make you a better gamer, right? Be a better gamer. It's so fun just to think about games and to learn cool ways to, to do... Um, Strategies that have higher winning percentages. But the problem that I always do is I always get all excited about these tip-top players like the little one and Brad Ock we did yesterday, and then we did White Raw, um, who is now apparently sponsored by Duckload. Um, so I actually, I like made so much fun of that name. I was like, why did he change his name to Duckload Raw? LOLOL, Duckload. I bet he was in a meeting room and he thought that was pretty cool. And that and that's, that's his, his sponsor. So, um, sincerest apologies to everyone who's ever been in Ukraine. So, whoopsie daisies on that one. But still, we got to see players like White Ra and Mad Frog, and ooh, and then we get some, some Korean players. Oh, Maka, Tester, all these goodies. But a real difficulty, and was, of course, was my difficulty when I was a, a young wee lad, is I had never had any idea how to be like them. I would watch and I would go, oh, deep appreciation, like, oh, bubbly feelings, and, and, then, and then I wouldn't, I would go play and I, I would still be one hatch lurker drop rushing. So we're going to go ahead and watch a, a gold level game. I got this from sc2replayed.com. Um, this is going to be a replay just between uh, a Terran and a Protoss player on Steps of War. I chose Steps of War because it's a fairly small map. A lot of people know it. There's not a lot of crazy kooky things that can go on um, as, as you could, you know, on, on one of these slightly more technical maps like Kulas Ravine. Didn't want to do much of any of that. So um, we're just going to go ahead and take a look at it. We're going to do a good bit of rewinding because we're going to look at one player, just solid focus on him. Rewind, look solid focus on the other player and talk about some of the things that are going right and some of the things that could be going right if we make a few adjustments. So let's go ahead and bounce right into it. So this game is between Fulcrum and Lost in Space. But look how he spells Lost in. <laughs> Actually, I didn't... <laughs> I didn't notice that when I first grabbed this replay. That's pretty that's pretty awesome. So we have a Protoss vs. Terran on this map. Um, now, like, I, I, I think it's really important in the process of improving, I'll just say this right now, to kind of be willing to be a little hard on yourself. Like, if you ever see me analyze my own replays, oh my god, I'm like scathing. I'm always all positive in my dailies. I'm like, wonderful, great, beautiful, marvelous. And when I watch my own replays, I'm like, god, I'm such a shitty newbie, you know? And that's, and that's actually somewhat helpful. Not to the extreme, but it's good to be kind of hard and go, hmm, I really should compare myself to someone insanely good and just say, like, wow, this barracks is not constantly making units. That's something I'd need to improve. Because if you can identify these sorts of things, you can absolutely um, start to improve at a much quicker rate. Uh, so here, just good. Have fun. Ah, good luck. Have fun, rather. <laughs> I, love the, I love the comma, the appropriateness of punctuation. But yeah, so we are going to be a little critical of some of the things that are going on here. But at the same time, there is the opposite issue that players um, will have when they're trying to improve. That they will be way too hard on themselves. They'll look at their play and be like, Oh, I don't know. I'm not playing like best. I'm not playing like Boxer or Bisu. I'll never ever be anyone. I'll never be good. So, um... It's important not to do that, so it's really I'm going to try to highlight both things that should be worked on and things that are going well. So, um, so first let's just look at the straight up basic early game. I'm going to come back and talk a little bit about planning, but let's just begin with our Terran buddy Fulcrum. So let's just switch the view over to him, and I'm going to uh, remove the camera, um, so that way I can have control. There is a few little things that I'm noticing right now. So for instance, this barracks is going down on 10 of 19. That's a little bit early. It's a little bit early. We're actually cutting um, our workers quite a lot here. 
Um, I would prefer to be building that around um, 11 or even 12 to build that much, much later, just so we can have that sort of good constant SCV production going on there. So um, what I'm going to look at right now are a lot of little subtle things. These are the sort of things that you would want to look for in your own play. So actually backing up. So if I'm Fulcrum and I'm just, you know, like trying to really focus on my, my game really hard, I would focus and I would notice things like, oh, no, this is a long time not to be building SCVs. And honestly, if I am a Terran player who's looking to improve, download... Um, um, replays of really good players and just try to mimic them try to do everything that they do so oh they seem to be building a ton of scvs and i want to assure you that especially early on you should be doing that sort of thing but either way we do have this wall off at the front little things like this pulling the scv off to hit the probe semi good you want to have the scv mining as much as possible SCVs. notice that right here we only have eight guys mining one is here chasing one is here building the barracks and one is down here getting totally <laughs> totally um just thronged down here um but either way if you have 11 scvs and three of them aren't mining that's like a third of your workers are not mining and when you kind of put it like that it's kind of like whoa that's that's, that's quite a lot, you know, that's that's a, a good bit of workers. But it's so easy at, at every point in the game to just sort of justify, like, hmm, yeah, I, I need to have this worker building, uh, you know, the barracks, so there's one. I need to have this worker, you know, going for the, for the, um, for the probe. And you can do little things like build these closer to your base so you can have more time mining. Or never pull this guy off to um, do some harassment. Just make sure all that stuff is mining as long as possible. Now, I've cheated a little bit because I did uh, breeze through this replay. Um, uh, look again. Oh, another building going down and SCVs being cut. How, honestly, what I would say, what I would say is a good general thought process to follow is always be making SCVs, always be making probes. And notice I didn't say a rule, it's just a way to think. It's just a way to benchmark yourself. Like, hmm, well I'm doing this build and I'm making out of six barracks right now, but I'm not making any SCVs. That's a, I would call that a little problematic. Now if you watch really tip-top, insanely, amazingly good players play, you'll see them stop building workers and intentionally do that. But I, I want you to know that what will happen in your evolution as a player, remember these are gold level players, is that you'll be constantly building workers and as you get better and better and better and better, one day, in the midst of having constantly made workers for many months, you'll realize, hmm, if I cut a worker here, that would help me in this way. You know, oh, if I don't build these two workers, I can build a command center three minutes earlier. Wow, oh, that's huge. You should cut your workers there. But if you're like anywhere, I'd even say platinum and lower, constantly build them workers. Even probably mid-level diamond, just constantly build them. And that is a good benchmark. Have an unbelievably clear intention not to build them. So we're already starting to see things like, okay, this orbital command, it's going down on 13 instead of 15. Um, that might sound earlier, but that's just because we cut those SCVs. So we do see a refinery going down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly speed up. I'm going to briefly speed up, right? Uh, just to sort of highlight this, okay? Do -do 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 -do, making some barracks. Now, if I were watching the replay at around this speed, I would say, okay, it looks like we have a Terran player who's going... Big Marauder, big Marauder play, right? Oh yeah, this is a huge amount of Marauders. Is he getting the upgrades? No, he's spending it on barracks first. That I think I like that. Um, all right, we have some more Marauders coming out. All right, cool. Now, if, if honestly, if you watch this like right now, like right now, this I mean, some people would probably really prefer three barracks instead of four, just because they'd get a little bit broke on the money. But that this looks like a pretty good, normal, ordinary style uh, of play. A big emphasis on Marauders, especially if you're on the um, on the Asian service. Players do this quite a bit, quite a bit, quite a bit. And I want to just highlight that 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 core is fine. That core works great. Um, and it's really critical, I think, to just say, what is this picture? There we go. Sometimes I just hit a button and oh, oh, get to see a different overlay. But anyways. Um, it's so critical to just say to yourself, I'm doing approximately the right thing. Because I'm, I'm not going to lie, the hard part in StarCraft, the hard part in any strategy game, 
is not the act of just getting the units. Too many people think that it's that. Um, you know, they'll just say, oh man, oh, wh what do I do against, you know, Dark Templar rushes? Okay, what you do is you get ravens and tanks and marines. And then they go, okay. And they just sort of do that willy-nilly. And it's actually pretty damn easy to just make the units that you read in the forum was the good unit to make. Really straightforward. It even kind of feel good. What is hard about StarCraft and what takes a long time to get good at is, is smoothness. Smoothness, like constant SCVs producing. Right when that supply depot needs to be finished is when it finishes. Right when that Marauder finishes building at the barracks is immediately when you have enough money for the next Marauder. That sort of thing. So, let, so that's why I was going through at the start and pointing out a few of these little bumps. We can see that... In terms of the approximation, perfectly fine to go for big Marauder-style pushes early on. Absolutely nothing wrong with doing that at all. I actually even want to bring up the APM queue a little bit, just so we can see that uh, a, a teensy bit. But I mean, for instance, we have this SCV pulling this probe. Here's a little thing. This is very little, very subtle, tiny advantage that you're going to get. This SCV is following this probe, but we already have a Marine that's about to pop out. We can use that Marine to kill this probe. Um... Great, we don't need this SCV chasing the probe anymore. If I sent him back to mining, that's maybe 10, 15 extra minerals I'm going to get in the long run. And imagine, if you did that five, six, seven times, just got, a, a, you know, an SCV to just stop doing something and make it a little bit more useful. See something like this? Just a little bit more useful, like, I'm actually going to back up just a bit. I'm going to back up just a bit. I'm going to point out another one of these little things. This guy is on attack. Almost certainly Fulcrum shift-clicked attack with the, with the SCV, like, follow this. But you should right-click and then hold shift and click back to these minerals. Just so no matter what happens with the probe, he's always going to come back as fast as possible. Because here, already, I would probably say this is about 5 minerals lost for this SCV. Okay, we have about 10 minerals-ish lost, as we can just sort of see these guys sort of cycling through. Oh, wait, I'm going a little bit slower in speed. Okay, cool. Yeah, great. That's really, really uh, little, little tiny thing. Especially at the start, we have probably... 10 super small things we can do, but remember, 10 super small things will add up to you being able to, say, build an extra barracks, or something like that. So here's another barracks come de coming down, and this is a classic sort of symptom that you get um, when you're when you're a new player, and actually it's it's such a huge, it's a, such a huge thing that even, um, you know, I, who've played strategy games for 12 years because I'm cool, um, even someone like me who's, you know, live, slept, and brothe RTS games for this long, I still do it, and I actively try to weed it out. It's the, oh my god, I gotta get it really fast, urge. You just, oh, oh, I gotta get it out. And that's not as important as just having things be smooth. So what am I seeing? You're hearing me say this again and again. Look, this barracks is going down. That's pretty early. 17 of 27. You do not have that many SCVs right now. So what's happening? Well, we do have an SCV getting built, but no Marines. Or um, This Marine was getting interrupted if I actually just back up for just uh, a period of time. Look, we have enough money to build that barracks, but look what's going to happen. Okay, now we go to build the barracks. We're not making SCVs. Okay, now we made it. Here's a period of time where nothing's being made from the barracks. Nothing's being made from the barracks. We only recently had enough money to make something from the barracks. Okay, cool. And also, we have two geysers. We have two geysers out right now. Three is not in each geyser. We're not making use of these geysers that we built. There's that urge of, oh my god, I gotta get my gas up really fast. I gotta get my orbital command up really fast. I gotta get this wall off up really fast. There's a probe in my base. I gotta kill that probe off as fast as I humanly possible can not nearly as important as just having a smooth well balanced well thought out sort of play because because this is what will actually happen is what will actually happen in the game um, if you try very hard to get in there very early in most all circumstances what will happen is you just won't have enough stuff like yeah hellions are great at harassing zerg early but Zerg can still just down, like, six larvae making 12 Zerglings and just waste them trying to kill off the Hellions. But the problem comes when you have, like, six Hellions. Oh my god, you can't really just throw up some larva to Zerglings and then try to defend it really fast. Um, you have to have some sort of plan already in progress as Zerg. So just little things like this, and as you start having tiny...